Hey, thank you, Divya. Um, so here we're just taking a look at um, what a typical migration process might look like, right? And you're starting here on the left-hand side, you'll see that there's a bit of preparation involved in beforehand, right? With the people involved, the processes, understanding the process that needs to be carried out and scoping the actual project. Then typically we start to look at the extraction phase along with profiling. So being able to understand the data and discover some of the data that you're working with here as well. Then the next phase would involve, in, involve some cleansing. So you might want to deduplicate, normalize and standardize that data before finally looking to enrich it with additional information. Now, when we're moving from uh, systems such as ECC to HANA, there might be additional information that's required that we need to enrich. And it might come from various different sources or, or uh, um, systems within the application and the organization. Then we look to map and transform that data so that it's ready to be loaded into the target system. In this case, we're talking about HANA. So let's take a look at what that might look like in a bit more detail here, right? And mentioning some of the precisely solutions. So we see here, we're just looking at the prepare and extract, the extract phase specifically. And you can see on the left-hand side, we've got our data sources, in this case being SAP that we're looking at, and the data integration and federation to those systems and to the SAP systems is done by Automate. So this is where Automate would look to help. And the discovery and connection of those um, systems would happen via the Automate product. Then what we have is the middle phase here, where we're talking about the extraction, not the, sorry, the discovery of the data, profiling that data in order to discover more information about it, then looking to do some cleansing, some validation and enriching of that information, which sits inside the Data 360 Analyze component. And that will allow the business to go in, explore the data, discover more about it. Then the next phase of this involves us doing the transformation, right? So we have the mapping of the data. We need to transform that data in order to get it ready to load into the target system being HANA. And that's the final stage here where we do the um, loading, the validation of what we're loading as well, all using the Automate Studio product to push that data into S4 HANA, and that completes the kind of journey that we would go through as part of the migration. And just here, I want to talk a bit about what we're going to be showing you in the products. So before we actually go in and take a look at the products, we'll just talk about it here quickly. So what we're going to talk through here is specifically within Analyze, how we can use Automate to extract that data, perform some analysis and governance on that data, looking at deduplication, enrichment, transformations, and cleanup, before finally then calling Automate Studio again to push the data back into S4 HANA. And without further ado, what I'll do is I'll take us into the product. So I'm just going to come in here and bring up Data360 Analyze. So what you're seeing here on screen is the, data th the precisely Data360 Analyze product. On the left-hand side here, you have your node palette, which provides you a lot of various different nodes that allow you to do many powerful things using a low-code, no-code approach. You can drag these onto the canvas and start to use them if you need to. We have more advanced nodes that do allow you to do more advanced things using scripting and coding if required. And the way these nodes would work is you'd grab one, you drag it onto the canvas here, and the center here is your canvas area. This is where you're able to create your data flows using the nodes and building blocks and connecting them together as you start to configure them. Once you select a node, you'll have a configuration panel on the right-hand side that will allow you to configure and create the transformations, the modifications, and changes within the tool that we're working with. What you'll also see is the designer is very visual in nature. So I can see the step that I'm carrying out here visually, and I can also see the number of records that are passing through each particular node. So as a consumer, this gives me visual auditability on the actual data flows and the transactional records that are flowing through my data flow. At any point within this data flow, I can click on the number and it will give me a snapshot of the data at that point and I can see the underlying data that's in there and I can start to, if I want to, filter the data, sort the data within the data viewer as well. So let's talk about a, a bit about what's happening in this scenario here. The first thing we're doing is we're calling the Automate Studio to pull our customer data from SAP. So we have this node here, which is our Automate Studio pull 
data from SAP ECC node. And if I select this, you'll see that it's actually executing and returning the data. So we've got some customer number information, we've got our title, we've got our customer name information, we've got some address information here, the city, the postal code, etc. So the information we pulled from our customer data from ECC. What will also return is the results of the execution. So we initialized Automate Studio, and we can see that we were able to download 707 records successfully, and an email notification was sent and identified for the record that we've done. Once we've been able to capture the data and we have it within Analyze, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to profile that data to understand a bit more about the data that I'm working with. So I return my profiling results. I can see the columns that are available in my data. I can start to understand if we have any semantic qualifications identified, like we've identified city information. There's some country codes in here. There's some currency codes. I can see those in here. Further down, we start to understand the min values, the max values, the min length, the max length, etc. Are there any null values in my columns? So I can start to see where there might be completely null values and where the data is not as complete. And I can also start to see that there's some leading and trailing white spaces there. So I've got some trailing white spaces here that I'm probably going to want to correct before I move forward. And I can also see that for my customer name, for example, there's only a smaller number of distinct values compared to the total record count. So I think there might be some duplication within this data as well. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to first run a remove duplicates node. And this node allows me to look across all the columns that I'm working with and understand are there any true duplicates within my data. And I can see now that my record count actually moves down to 127. So there was a significant amount of duplicates in the data that I was looking at. So I've removed those. The next thing I want to do after I looked at my profiling was that there were some tr leading and trailing white spaces in my data. So I'm actually going to run a trim field node, which allows me to trim any white spaces that exist within my data. And it'll go off and it'll trim all that data and produce the untrimmed data as a result of that. So now I've removed my duplicates. I've trimmed my data, getting rid of any white spaces that are involved. The next thing I want to do with my data is I want to look up some values that I require for my S4 HANA migration. And I'm just going to drill into this node. This is a composite node, which houses a number of nodes underneath. And I'm going to open this node up, just drill into it. And I can see here that what we're doing is we're actually looking up our cells organization data. So we're doing a join here and doing a lookup. And we're actually capturing our cells organization information for S4 HANA by joining into our data set. We're doing a second join here to look up for our distribution channel. So we're adding our distribution channel information. And then finally, we're looking up our division and adding our division data for S4 HANA. At any point in this flow, if there are any exceptions that are being thrown out, then we're sending an email to the relevant people to notify them of the exceptions that would have been captured. Now, moving back up to the top after we've enriched with our S4 HANA values, we also want to enrich with some of our sales and shipping data that we have. And this actually comes from a third source, which is an API source. So we're actually connecting to an API source and capturing the information that we want within our organization from the API source, bringing that into Analyze, and then enriching our data that we had from ECC with the additional information around the shipping information that we captured as well. So the shipping information, the tax classification code, et cetera. Once that's all been brought together, we now have our data fully combined that we need for our S4 HANA. We have it corrected with no duplicates existing in here anymore, and we have it trimmed of any leading or, white, or, leading or trailing white spaces that are required. The final thing we do is we order the data how we'd like it to be ordered using the reorder fields node. And then we are now going to call the Automate Studio product again to push that data into S4 HANA. So again, we use the Automate Studio node, and then we get the output results here, which tells us the script has run, it's writing the relevant data that needs to be written, and then we can understand how many records are successful and how many records failed in that process. And that then allows it to be written back to HANA. So that's taken us from an end-to-end -end process where we've read from SAP, we've done some discovery on the data, we've removed any duplicates and done some correction of the data, we've enriched it with additional information that we need for our migration, and then finally called Automate Studio again to push that data back into 
S4 HANA. Now, once we've created this process, we're happy with this process, we will also want to automate this, to schedule this to run in an automated fashion. And if I just exit from the data flow here, you'll see that I can come into my data flow. I can create a new schedule on this. I could call this, for example, my weekly migration task. And then I can schedule this to run on a monthly, weekly, a daily, hourly, however often basis. We're going to choose weekly in this case. I can say I want this to run on a Sunday, and I can get it to run at an unsociable hour that I might want it to run at. And that will run, go off and run now on a regular basis and execute the task that we've specified and provide you results every day on what's happened and notify if any issues have occurred or not. Okay. So that is what I wanted to cover here, looking at the process in Analyze from taking it from the Automate Studio and then finally pushing it back into um, S4 HANA as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand over to Divya and she's going to actually take you through what's happening on the Automate side of those nodes that we're calling within Analyze. So I'll stop sharing for now. Thank you, hand Sadat. Well, what I'd like to really do is um, give you a glimpse of what actually happens in those two nodes that you saw within the Analyze flow, um, which interacts with SAP from within the Automate Studio capability. So there are two key steps that we performed. So the first step was to extract the data out of SAP um, ECC. And, and what we really did was we combined multiple tables together within our product, and uh, this gives us the easy access to that data extracted directly onto an Excel interface. It's a simple drag and drop approach of working with these table and table joints. And in fact, this product is strong enough to enable the org level security that the users have. So we are completely within the audit train uh, to ensure that the users are only allowed to extract the data that they're al allowed to work with otherwise within SAP. So you can build these queries to schedule them and run them. But what we have done is we've called this query from within the Analyze node to ensure that we do that data extraction live out of the SAP system. The final step also um, calls an automate script. And in this case, it is to load the data back into an S4 HANA system. So what we have done is we've chosen the transaction code that is used within S4 HANA in this example that we showed you. It was the business partner transaction uh, that has been automated. We've mapped the fields that we automated within that transaction to an Excel interface. And the data was picked from within that Excel, processed that through, and you saw the results coming back in line with the data. We also have the ability to chain multiple steps together. So if there are three to five different steps that need to be carried out within SAP, that can be done. And uh, this is the script that has been called again from within the Analyze node. Uh, and, and this is a transactional script that we're working with. What I'd like to do is give you a glimpse of how the product looks like. So we are looking at the Automate Studio capability. So this is a desktop application. It has three main um, modules. So as you see here on the screen, it's transaction query and direct. We've used two of them in the example that we showed you. So the transaction node was used for automating a transaction code for data load. And we also use the query node as the name suggests. This is to design a query or a report for data extraction out of SAP. We also can interact with BAPIs in SAP, and that's just an alternate way of connecting to SAP for data movement. I am going to open up the scripts that are sat behind the, the scenes of what you've just seen. So this is um, the query builder application that you're looking at, where we have worked with the tables and the table joins. You have the ability to select multiple fields. You also can add appropriate filtering criteria to ensure that you're tailoring that query for the data set that you're after. Our product also comes with a very rich data dictionary, which is a collection of all the tables uh, based on the different modules within an SAP system. So again, you'll see here that in, in our example, we were working with customer master data and all the customer master tables are listed here, which can simply be dragged and dropped onto this workspace, selected the fields, add the criteria, and then you can test run it. 
We have mapped this to the columns of the Excel interface, so you'll see here that once you've built your query, you could drag and drop that function and map it to the various columns so it identifies what field has to go into which column of that Excel interface when you actually execute it. This script can be run in multiple formats. So for a typical business as usual function, a user can go into an Excel interface called the add-in that we provide and run it. You also can schedule the script, but we have called this through a command prompt so you could make that end-to-end -end process happen using the Analyze uh, product here. This was the query that we ran in. Similarly, we also have the transaction script. So you'll see here that it gives us the ability to automate all the fields from within a given transaction code using a simple macro style recording. And once we have done that, we again have the list of fields available to us that can then be dragged and dropped to map to the different columns of the spreadsheet. So once we have extracted the data and been through the stages of the data profiling, deduplication, transformation, enrichment of that data from within the Analyze product suite, we can now run this particular script to create the business partners in SAP. And typically on Excel as well, we see the results coming back in line with the data set and the actual business partner numbers that are created in SAP are identified here.